guard him from the top of his head to the very soles of his feet and allow him once again to experience the love that you shower down upon him so that we too can have that same experience. In Jesus' most holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Star of Evangelization, pray for us.
1 John chapter 3, I'm going to be in verse 1. When you get there, say amen. amen. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. It says, See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we, we may be called children of God. Yet so we are. The Good News Translation says, In fact, we are. In each and every one of us. God loves us like each and every person on the earth. God loves in a personal way. He loves everybody, but he loves us personally, like individually. You know, um, and love is a very powerful thing. Love is so powerful. Uh, well, 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says, love never fails. Love will fix anything. And love is so powerful. Uh, go ahead, Alice. Most of us at some point in time or another have been in love in our life, right? And, and what happens when you fall in love? Come on now. <laughs> you don't even need to sit in a lower clock to get out of bed. You wake up and you're like, ooh. You know, you can crash the car. It don't matter. <laughs> Somebody loves me. Listen, I had a girlfriend back way back in the day. She used to beat me out of beeper. It means I'm a little older than some of you anyway. She used to beat me all once. And I don't care how bad my day was going. I would see that. I'd, be, I'd feel good. Somebody was thinking about me, right? And I was engaged 10 years ago. Does anyone know what that means? She used to text me. I advanced. I got a cell phone now. And uh, she used to text me 143. Does anyone know what that means? There's one letter in I. There's four letters in love. I love you. You know, and I get those messages, and it would just make me feel better. But listen, that's human love. Human love changes. The love that God has for you. Psalm 139, verse 17 and 18. God says, the thoughts I have for you, the designs I have for your life, are more than all the sands on the seashore. And if you pick up a handful of sand, you have 200,000 grains of sand in your hand. No matter what those girls were thinking about God or your husband or wife, whatever, God loves you 100 times greater. Besides that, uh, his love is consistent. It's never changing. And so we have people in here that are married, right? We have married people in here. And then one day you may wake, wake up 10 years after you got married. And look across the bed, and he said, oh, Lord, it does not look like the man I married. You know, but, but God's love is not like that. God's love, in Je Jeremiah 31, 3, it says, I have always loved you. I will continue to show you my constant love. With age-old love, I have loved you. And I love the scripture. It's in Isaiah 49, verse 15. It says, your name is carved on the palm of God's hand. He says, should your mother, the, the mother of that raised you in the womb, forget you? I never will. Amen? Amen? Your name is carved in his hand. I read that. I said, I was scandalized. I said, the Lord has a tattoo? <laughs> but it's the truth. The Lord will never forget about you. The Lord will never stop thinking about you. The Lord loves you. Um, God has chosen first above everything else to be your father. God loves you personally in a deep personal way. The second golden nugget is that God loves you unconditionally. And does anyone know why God loves you unconditionally? I'll let somebody can take a stab at it. Because he created us. Yes, yes. He created us, but the Bible says in 1 John 4, 8, God is God. God is, you don't have a choice. God is, the whole essence of God is love. God does not have a choice but to love us. And he loves us unconditionally. You know, when we, we sometimes we got to earn our love. You know, or we, we got to be good and then people will like us. And I, got, I got a lot of funny stories. I'm going to give you another one here. Father Mark's here today. But he, he's been here, you've been here three years or four? Coming up on four? Three. three years. Well, when he first got here, you know, I just really wanted him to like me. <laughs> My friend Travis, he actually said I had a man crush on him. <laughs> but to be honest, I think Travis is the one with the man crush. <laughs> but anyway, I, I wanted him to like me so bad. I did these stupid things. I, I look back and I'm like laughing at myself. I just look back and somehow I'm trying to press him, you know. I want to press this guy. I want him to like Listen, we don't have to impress God. God knows us. He made us. He lives inside of us. God knows your strengths. God knows your fault. He's on the inside of you. God loves you because you are you. He created you. You're special. You're different, yes, than anyone else. And God loves you just because of that. 
You know, there's seven billion people in the world. We all, it's amazing. We all look different. We're all unique in our way, and God loves us like that. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Once again, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10. It says, mountains and hills may crumble, but my love for you will never end. His love does not change like the human love. He's not going to wake up one day and look at you and say, oh my God, what has happened to you? Okay, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, it says love, and I love this in the Bible. It says love is patient, love is kind, love keeps no record of wrongs, love bears all things, love hopes all things, love endures all things, love sees the best in all things. And that's the kind of love that God has for us. We, you know, we kind of, we look at each other, I know, because I do too, when, we, when somebody makes a mistake, it's real easy to see. You know, when somebody, may, somebody can do something right a hundred times in a row, trust me, this happens to me and I make a mistake, and people, especially when you got a microphone, people will be glad to point it out for you. But anyway, just as human beings, though, it's very easy to look at each other and notice each other's faults. But, but God doesn't do that. God sees the best. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are like, if you only knew what I've done in my life, if you knew the anger or, or, or bitterness or, or hate that I have in my heart, that God couldn't love me. But, but God loves you anyway. God loves you just the way you are. He loves you unconditionally. Um, you know, he's not mad at you. God is not mad at anybody. A lot of people think that. You know, the way I've lived my life, God is disappointed in me. God is not mad at you. God is madly in love with you. God knows you're in pain. He lives in us. Psalm 56 verse 8 says, Every tear that you cry, Almighty has it a bottle. Because when you hurt, guess who hurts as well? He hurts. When you're in pain, when you've gone through something rough in your life, He's right there with you. He feels that pain. He wants to walk in that pain with you. God is not mad at you at all. You know, um, you got a newborn baby in your arms, right? Is there anything that a newborn could do to make you mad? No. No. It keep, whatever. Crap all over you. And you're like, well, oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> right? Throw up in your face. Ah, Prince of Lord, I got my new. Listen, we throw up and we look at each other's fault. God is always looking at us like the infant. We're, the Bible says we're children of God. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're 75 years old and you're reading that scripture. You're God's child. When he looks at you, that's what he sees. He don't see the mess ups. God sees the beauty and dignity that he created you with. He made you one of a kind special. That's what God sees when he looks at us. You know, I had this, uh, I had a neighbor that lived down the street when I was a little kid. And, and when I was like four years old, her name was Mrs. Seeper. And she had like 11 kids. And she was always bragging about her kids. Man, it used to irritate us, you know? <laughs> Johnny, he's going to be an NFL player. And Susie, she's so smart. She's going to be the president, the first woman. Well, I go, please, come on. But I just thought about it when I was putting this talk together. Because when God sees us, God looks at the best. God wants the best for us. When he looks at us, he sees our potential. He don't see all our mistakes. Oh, Paul, in Romans 8.38... Paul says, I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Paul said, I am convinced. Listen, when Paul wrote that, where was he? Does anyone know? Prison. He was in prison. A lot of the Bible that he wrote in prison. He wasn't in today's prison where they had watch groups, making sure you get a good meal, a TV, a blanket, the heat. This was back when prison was like... Um, Prison was prison. You were up to wherever they were going to do to you. That's what happened. You were at their mercy. Paul said nothing. I'm convinced. He said not life or death. Not today's worries or tomorrow's fears. No angel. No demon. No creature. No nothing. Paul said nothing can separate us from God's love. God's love is on the inside of us. Okay, Alice. No, go back. <laughs> we're, we're working with this PowerPoint. Sometimes when I'm talking, I forget that I have a PowerPoint. Up in Canada, I finished my talk, and I look back. My PowerPoint was halfway through. Alice in the computer. <laughs> 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 anyway. Okay, Alice. Okay, Alice. Um, so, 
Jeremiah 21, 9, 11. And half of y'all in here know that scripture. You just quote it. God love you. Good plan for your life. Hope. Not for, for good and not for bad. I've heard it a million times. Sometimes I hear it goes in one ear and out the other. But as I was preparing this love talk, I saw some new words in there. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know well. God says, I know well the plans I have for you. Plans for your welfare, not for hope. To give you a future, not to give you hope. He says to give you a future full of hope. God says, I know well the plan. He has an amazing plan for your life. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says he's able to accomplish far more. Not just more. God says far more than you can ask or imagine. And we have to trust in his plan more than our own. Go ahead, Alice. And so, with this, I do, I want to give you a little bit of my personal testimony. You know, when I did arrive here seven and a half years ago, oh man, I was a wreck. My life was a wreck. Every I was a wounded. You know, I remember, I was wounded. I was 40 or 39 years old when I got here. Anyway, all my wounds that I carried through my life, I, I brought them into the center. But I, I remember when I was like five years old, I was insecure. I remember I was timid, or I was nervous. I just remember it. I just felt like I didn't fit in. I felt like I didn't quite measure up. Um, and so, you know, I, I talked to, uh, I, did, I work with kids a little bit here now. In the past year, I've been working with kids a little bit more. And uh, when, I, when I work with kids, if you ever get like five kids together, teenagers, they're terrified of looking stupid in front of one another. Everything they want. You put them up in front of the church, they're like this. Because they don't want to look stupid. They don't want to do anything stupid. And we're all kind of like that. We're all like that when we're kids. And there, there was so much fear in my life and worry and anxiety. And I just wanted to be liked. That's all I wanted. I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be approved of. I remember when I was in high school. I was starving for approval. I could fall in love with a girl like that. All she had to do was smile at me or give me a little bit of attention. I kid you not, we'd be living together the next day and having more times than I want to count. Because I was starving. you got to understand that. I was starving for the love of God. I did not know it. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that my people die because they do not know me. They die because they don't know the love that I have for them. I'm dying to love them to death. For them to open their heart and receive my love. Because listen, when I started receiving the love of God, my entire life changed. You know, like, like I was telling you, I mean, I can wake up many days I walk around just in the joy of the Lord. Um, and uh, Father Mark likes to tell the story, and I've, I've, I've adopted the story when I give talks. I love the story. It's about the, the eagle that got raised in the chicken coop. And so some of y'all might have heard it, but listen, I got my own rendition. <laughs> Thank you, Father Mark. Anyway, the eagle is the king of the sky. The same eagle can look straight into the sun. The eagle looks up to, looks up to no one. The eagle is the king of the sky. And uh, they say he can see anything forever. The eagle can see. And no one messes with the eagle. Anyway, there was an eagle's nest up on a mountain. And one of the eggs fell out. And it rolled down into a chicken coop. And what happened? These chickens found it. And these were some nice chickens. <laughs> and so they said, you know what? We're going to raise this one. And so they sat on it. And it was nine months later, it cracked open. Is that right? No, it's an egg. It probably took about a week. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this, so here this eagle, this eagle gets up. And, uh, and they raised them to be a chicken. What do chickens do? Go ahead, Alice. They eat. What do they eat? They eat dirt. They walk around pecking on the ground. And what else? They walk around, they peck their nuts, you know what I mean? They look kind of stupid, but they do it all day, every day. They can't fly. They can fly about two feet off the ground, and then what happens? Crash and burn. They crash and burn. They're, you know, they're all running around. The eagle, what does he do? The eagle soars. One day, this, this eagle on the chicken nest, he said, I saw an eagle up there. And he said, I'm going to do that. They said, negative. No, it ain't going to happen. You're one of us. You need to be in here with us. You will never fly. And he received that. But about a week later, another one flew over. He said, man, I want to do that. They said, don't even think about it. That's not for you. You are one of us. Anyway, a little time passed. He said he didn't say nothing to nobody. He climbed up on a fence and he jumped off. And he started a little wind and he started soaring. Listen, you and I were created to soar. 
We were created to soar. We, I want to fly into the big blue sky. I don't want to live my life in that little box I lived it in the whole time. Until the love of God comes in our heart and we know who we are and how much He loves us, we will not soar. We were created, you and I, we were created to soar. God has an awesome, amazing plan for our life. But we've got to open up our hearts. We've got to open up our hearts and receive His love and walk with the love of God. You know, um, where are we at our time, Allison? About 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Everyone turn them out to Psalm chapter 23. And Psalm is right after Job. And it's before Proverbs. And it's right kind of like in the middle of the Bible. <coughs> Psalm chapter 23, we've all heard it. You can't read this enough. He needs to get engraved on the inside of us. When you get there, say amen. amen. Psalm chapter 23, verse 1. Listen, when I was putting this talk together a while back, I gave it a while back earlier in the year. I, I read this verse, and I couldn't read it anymore. I started welling up with tears. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I lack. It says, in green pastures you let me graze. To safe waters you lead me. You restore my strength. You refresh my soul. You guide me along the right path for the sake of your name. God is love. His name is love. Because you love me is why you do that for me. God is right next to you even if you don't know it. It says, even when I walk through a dark valley, we're all going through tough times. I fear no harm, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff give me courage. Verse 5 says, You set a table before me as my enemies watch. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflowed. Amen. My cup overflowed my whole life. I just never paid attention to it. Because I didn't have the love of God in my heart. Verse 6 says, Only goodness and love will pursue me all the days of my life. Amen? Amen? God's love is pursuing me. If you drive down the freeway and you look in your rear view mirror, I like that image. You look and you can't get away. He's chasing you. That's why you're here today. That's why I'm here today. That's why I wake up every day. You know, one time I was at a grocery store and um, I was at a grocery store. You know how they have their self-checkout lanes? And where you go and you got to do it all yourself. And like, they've they gotten a lot better. But when they first came out with those things, whew, you know, they were hard to work and they get stuck. And one, one girl in charge of four of them. I was going through there one day and she was on the phone. She was yakking on the phone. A little 18-year-old girl. And I wasn't feeling all that good. And this was in my walk. This was about two years into my walk. And it was Christ. And um, anyway, I finished doing everything and I was about to go complain. I felt like I had a right to complain. So I went over to the manager's desk where there's two managers sitting there. I said, you know what? And they said, can we help you, sir? And I, I realized right at that moment I had a shirt on that said Jesus on it. <laughs> <laughs> I looked down and I was like, uh, have a nice day. Thank you for everything. <laughs> anyway, I got home and the Lord started healing. The Lord started dealing with my heart. The fact of the matter, I was standing at a grocery store. That's a miracle. That means my legs work. I can see. It also means I got money in my pocket. And I got a car out in the lot with a full tank of gas. I got a refrigerator at the house to put those groceries in. I can eat myself sick. I got a freezer, guess what? I can store food for a year if I'd like to. In that house, I never get wet. You know why? Because it's got a roof on it over it. I got a bed, I actually got a Tempur-Pedic. I sleep very well every night. My bed never gets rained on. Why? Where do I get these things? The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I lack. Amen. The Lord said to me, you were about to complain? <laughs> I think we can all relate to that. Amen. 
You know, when I got that revelation, everything, the clean clothes, I, I wrote a thank you letter to God about a month ago. I was at a talk, I went to hear a talk, and somebody suggested it. And I was writing a thank you letter to God. The, the friends that I had in the life. The friends that I had in the life, it's unbelievable. With the, with the goodness of God. Psalm 13, verse 6 says, I will sing to the Lord because he's good to me. And when we get that revelation, everything that we have, everyone I know, Everyone I know in my circle of friends is a gift from God. You know, and I, and I have the most best friend. God, the Lord provides everything we need. And the more we get to know, we get to realize this love of God, it just grows. It grows. I remember when I was, a, a couple years ago, Brother Ron Wright, uh, he's going to give the last talk get tomorrow. He told me, oh, it's only going to get better. And I was standing there, right? How can it get better than this? Oh, my God. He wasn't lying. He was speaking the truth into me. You know, he has an amazing plan for your life. God wants us to be one with him, others, ourselves, and the whole world. God loves me more than I love myself. And the last golden nugget is that God took the initiative. God took the first step to love us. In Luke chapter 15, verse 4 to 6, you know, no one came running into church. <clears throat> no one came running into the church and said, I'm going to love them. I'm going to seek God. I'm going to love God. We're going to have this big love. No, that ain't how we get here. We get here because we're hurt. We've been left, rejected, kicked around, and we come seeking. He's the last house on the block. We will try everything else. He seeks us out. He sought us out first. We didn't seek him out first. Well, a lot of us get to the church because we're in desperation mode, a divorce, whatever it may be. Luke 15, verse 4 to 6. It says, What man among you, having a hundred sheep, losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine and go after the lost one until he finds it? And that's what God does with us. It says, the Bible says, when he finds that lost sheep, he puts it on his shoulders. And he has great joy and he brings it back home. And he calls, I find, here's my lost sheep, I found my lost sheep. And the Lord is looking for his lost sheep. The Lord is always calling us. He's seeking us out. 1 John 4, 19 says we love God because he loved us first. It wasn't the other way around. I, I started loving seeking God out of desperation. I didn't know where else to turn. And so and I know most people in church are like that. And God wants us, but we have to allow God to love us. Go ahead, Alex. And so I'm going to close with a story. That's my cat. That's one of my cats. I got two cats. That cat's name is Little B. Little B slept on my head last night. I have Little B and Mama. And, and I don't play favorites, but Little B is my favorite. Don't Mama. Anyway, these cats, I got them about, uh, I got them in 2002. I got him in two, I've had him for 12 years. And when I, I went to, I was going somewhere and I saw him in a, little, a cage outside of a store. And they wanted $50 and I paid the money. And, um, anyway, I took him home. I had a truck at the time. I put him in a cage in the back of the truck. And so when I got home, they had almost died. Little B had a panic anxiety. Oh, she didn't have any claws on her. Oh, she lost all of her claws. There was blood in there and then there was pee and urine. It was just, it was a mess. I couldn't hear nothing. It was in a truck. And so by the time I got home, this is what I encountered. And so anyway, I took them upstairs, I cleaned them up, put them in my house. It took about a week for them to just, you know, come out from under the bed. But anyway, uh, you know, whenever I take a little bee to the doctor, Mama's pretty cool about it. But a little bee, I just took a little bee the other day. And what do they do? Does anyone have cats in here? And man, they think you're like going to put them in a pillowcase and put a big rock in there and throw them in the river. <laughs> I mean, they're like, you know. But why am I taking little B to the vet? Because I love her. Because she needs some medicine. She needs to be looked at. Something I can't do. And, and we're like that with God. God loves us. He, he wants us to get out. He wants us to get out. You know, uh, and little B, she would hide for like the first couple years of her life. I'd only see her about 20% of the time. She'd be in hiding. It took her a long time to come out of that. 
And so whenever she'd come out, then I could play with her and pet her and brush her, whatever it is they love. You know, cats love when you purr and uh, however that works. <laughs> I didn't just do that, ignore that. <laughs> um, anyway, but only when she allowed me to love her could I love her. I couldn't love her when she was in hiding. And, and, and if, you, if you play back the tape, 12 years, and, and you ask little B, if you, look, can we put you in the back of this truck? You're going to go through some stuff. Little B would not have gotten in my truck. I would have never had the, the you know, this cat. It, it wore like that. We have to allow God to love us. Amen. We have to open our heart and say, come on in. I, want, I guess it's going to change my life. But I'm up for the challenge. I'm up for the change. I want more. There's something here I haven't experienced, and I want it. And when you open your heart, and you truly receive, immersed in the love of God, your life will never, ever be the same. And with that, what I want you to do, we're going to go to the next room. Just get up quietly and carefully, and we're going to go to the next room for an activity. Thank you. 